What if I told you that while most of the world is still stuck in traffic jams, one African nation just leapfrogged everyone else and became the first on the continent to successfully test a flying taxi? And Rwanda has carried out the public flight of a self-flying electric car taxi in the country, the first of its kind in the African continent. So ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, keep your minds open and let's take off on this journey together. Welcome to Aviation Africa 2025, Murakazaneza Ichigari. Today, for the first time in Africa, a self-flying air taxi will take to the skies. And wait until you hear why Rwanda was chosen over countries like the US, Germany, or Japan for this groundbreaking test. The reason will blow your mind. But first, smash that like button because what you're about to see is going to change how you think about the future of transportation forever. This is Kigali, Rwanda, with a population of 1.4 million. During the Aviation Africa 2025 summit, the country experienced the first ever public flight of a self-flying passenger drum. The vehicle in question is a E-Hang A216s, a fully autonomous and pilotless electric aircraft that took to the skies in what would become Africa's first successful flying taxi demonstration. But here's what most news outlets won't tell you. This wasn't just a test flight. This was Rwanda announcing to the world that they're not just participating in the future, they're leading it. Now you might be wondering, why Rwanda? Why not New York? Why not Tokyo? Why not Dubai? I mean, we're talking about a country that, just 30 years ago, was facing one of the world's greatest tragedies. So how did they become the aviation pioneer of Africa? The answer lies in something most countries struggle with, but Rwanda have mastered. And by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why Rwanda is about to become the Silicon Valley of Africa. But first, let me show you exactly what this flying taxi can do, because the specs are absolutely insane. Meet the Ehang A26 teams. This isn't your typical aircraft. It's completely autonomous, meaning no pilot required. Two passengers, 16 rotors arranged in a coaxial double design, and here's the kicker. It can fly for 35 kilometers on a single charge, but speed? This thing cruises at 130 kilometers per hour. That means a trip from downtown Kigali to the airport, normally a 45 minute drive through traffic, becomes a five minute flight. And the safety features? Absolutely mind blowing. The A2016s uses something called distributed electric propulsion, which means if one motor fails, you've got 15 others keeping you in the air triple redundancy flight control systems, automatic emergency landing, real-time monitoring, comprehensive backup systems for all critical components. This thing is literally safer than most commercial airline. Each of the 16 motors is completely independent, so even if half of them failed, which is virtually impossible, you'd still land safely. But here's where it gets really interesting, the economics. Traditional helicopter rides in major cities can cost $200 to $500 per trip, but electric flying taxis? we're looking at potentially $20 to $50 per ride once they scale. The global flying taxi market is projected to hit $15 billion by 2030, and Rwanda just positioned itself right at the center of it. Now, about that price tag. The A216s has a suggested retail price of $410,000. That might sound expensive, but compare that to a traditional helicopter, which costs anywhere from $1.5 to $15 million, 410, zero 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 dollars for a fully autonomous electric aircraft that requires no pilot training no fuel and minimal maintenance starts looking like a bargain the charging infrastructure is equally impressive the aircraft takes just one hour to fully charge and with smart battery management systems using 12 independent battery packs even if several batteries failed the aircraft would still operate safely we're talking about solid state battery technology here some of the most advanced in the world with an energy density of 480 watt hours per kilogram. Oh, remember that question I asked earlier? Why Rwanda? The answer is going to shock you. Today, for the first time in Africa, a self flying air taxi will take to the skies. We are very happy to be part of this demonstration and look forward to seeing what will come next. For Africa, the vision is very clear. To invest, 
in a strong and more dynamic aviation sector as a necessary building block for economic growth. With a growing middle class and increasing tourism, the demand for air travel will only get stronger. The numbers speak for themselves. In the coming years, passenger traffic on our continent is expected to double. And it has everything to do with how Rwanda thinks about the future differently than every other country on Earth. This is President Paul Kagame. And for the past 20 years, he's been quietly building something unprecedented. While other countries were debating regulations, Rwanda was implementing them. While others were stuck in bureaucracy, Rwanda was moving fast and breaking barriers. Here's the secret most people don't know about Rwanda. They didn't just wake up one day and decide to test flying taxis. They've been systematically building the most advanced aviation ecosystem in Africa for over a decade. Remember when Amazon was promising drone delivery someday? Rwanda's been doing it since 2016. Medical supplies, blood banks, vaccines, all delivered by drone to remote villages. But here's the part that will blow your mind. As of 2021, more than 75% of blood deliveries in Rwanda outside of Kigali use drone. That's a higher rate than any developed country in the world. The United States is still debating whether drones are safe for package delivery, while Rwanda has buying saving lives with them for nine years. Let me give you some numbers that will shock you. Since starting drone delivery in 2016, Rwanda has dispatched more than 7,000 units of blood products to 21 hospitals. Red blood cells, platelets, plasma, all flying through the air while most of the world was stuck arguing about regulations. These aren't just packages we're talking about. These are life and death medical supplies reaching remote hospitals in 15 minutes instead of four hours by road. Here's a statistic that perfectly captures why Rwanda is different. Before drone delivery, between 25 to 40% of all temperature sensitive medical supplies in Rwanda were wasted due to inconsistent cold chain infrastructure and poor roads. After implementing drone delivery, blood product expiration was reduced by approximately 7 units each month. That doesn't sound like much until you realize each of those units represents a human life that could be saved. Rwanda's mountainous topography makes road transport incredibly difficult. What takes 4 hours by treacherous mountain roads takes 15 minutes by drone. But here's the genius part. Rwanda didn't see their challenging geography as a limitation. They saw it as an opportunity to leapfrog traditional infrastructure entirely. And this partnership with China Road and Breach Corporation for the flying taxi demonstration? It's not just about what aircraft. It's about Rwanda becoming the testing ground for the entire future of African aviation. China chose Rwanda specifically because they have the most progressive aviation regulations in the world. While the US FAA takes years to approve new technology, Rwanda approves it in months. But they don't compromise on safety. In fact, they're often stricter than developed countries because they understand that being first means they have to be flawless. Here's what most people don't understand about Rwanda's aviation strategy. They're not just importing technology, they're building local expertise. The country is training its own pilots, technicians, engineers, air traffic controllers, and regulatory experts. They're creating an entire ecosystem around advanced air mobility. This isn't just about flying taxis. This is about becoming the aviation hub of East Africa. Let me paint you a picture of what Rwanda's master plan looks like. Vision 2050 includes becoming a fully integrated smart aviation hub for the entire region. Picture this, flying taxi networks connecting Kigali to Kampala, Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, a web of electric aircraft crisscrossing the region, turning what used to be day-long journeys into hour-long flight. They're already building the infrastructure. Charging stations designed specifically for electric aircraft. Landing pads integrated into urban planning from the ground up. Air traffic management systems designed specifically for autonomous aircraft. And here's the brilliant part. They're not retrofitting old infrastructure. They're building everything from scratch with the future in mind. But the real genius of Rwanda's approach goes deeper than just technology. It's about understanding that the future belongs to countries that can execute, not just plan. While developed countries spend decades in regulatory hell, Rwanda moves with purpose. They understand that being second in emerging technology markets means being irrelevant. Africa has a massive transportation problem. Poor road infrastructure, limited railways, expensive traditional aviation. But flying taxis could leapfrog all of that. 
just like mobile phones allowed Africa to skip landline infrastructure entirely. Imagine connecting Lagos to Abuja in two hours instead of eight. Imagine medical emergencies in rural Kenya being minutes away from urban hospitals instead of hours. This isn't just about convenience. This is about completely reimagining how a continent of 1.4 billion people moves. The economic implications are staggering. MC Kinsey estimates that advanced air mobility could add $15 billion annually to Africa's GDP by 2035. But that's just the beginning. Think about what this means for African cities. Traffic congestion costs African economies billions of dollars every year in lost productivity. Lagos, Cairo, Johannesburg, Nairobi, all choking on traffic that moving to three dimensions could solve instantly. But it's not just about traffic. It's about connecting rural communities to urban opportunities, about making African countries internally connected in ways they've never been before. Rwanda understands something that most countries miss. The future of transportation isn't about improving existing systems. It's about completely replacing them. While other countries debate how to fix their roads and railways, Rwanda is building the infrastructure for a world where those limitations don't matter. Here's a statistic that perfectly illustrates the opportunity. Africa has only 3% of the world's paved roads, but 17% of the world's population. Traditional infrastructure development would take decades and cost trillions. But three-dimensional transportation infrastructure? That can be built in years, not decades. And Rwanda isn't thinking small. By 2030, they plan to have the most advanced urban air mobility network in Africa and possibly the world. They're not just talking about flying taxis for rich tourists. They're talking about integrating autonomous aircraft into public transportation, making three-dimensional mobility accessible to ordinary citizens. But let's be real about the challenges because this isn't going to happen overnight. Battery technology still needs improvement for longer flights. Current lithium-ion batteries limit range, though solid-state batteries promise to change that. Weather conditions in Africa can be extreme, from desert sandstorms to tropical thunderstorm. Infrastructure costs are enormous, especially for developing countries. And then there's public acceptance. Are people ready to trust their lives to a pilotless aircraft? Survey data shows that acceptance varies dramatically by region, with younger populations being much more open to autonomous transportation. But Rwanda has an advantage here too. Their successful drone delivery program has already normalized autonomous aircraft in the public consciousness. Technical challenges remain significant. The A216 still has limitations. Its 35-kilometer range means it's suitable for urban and short regional flights, but not for long-distance travel. The two-passenger capacity limits its usefulness for family transportation. And weather dependency means that, like helicopters, operations can be grounded by storms or high winds. But here's what separates Rwanda from other countries. They're not waiting for perfect conditions. They're creating them. This demonstration flight isn't just a publicity stunt. It's step one in a carefully planned rollout that will span the next decade. They're starting with controlled demonstrations, moving to limited commercial operations, then gradual expansion as technology improves and public acceptance grows. Rwanda's approach is methodical but aggressive. They understand that emerging technology markets reward first movers disproportionately. Being first in autonomous aircraft operations positions them to attract investment, talent, and partnerships that wouldn't otherwise consider Africa. It's the same strategy that made them a leader in digital governance and drone delivery. The regulatory framework Rwanda has built is actually more sophisticated than most developed countries. They've created sandbox environments where new technologies can be tested safely, but without bureaucratic delays. They've established certification processes that are both rigorous and rapid. And they've built international partnerships that give them access to the latest safety and technology standards. Here's something most people don't realize about the eHang partnership. This isn't just Rwanda buying aircraft from China. It's a joint venture that includes technology transfer, local manufacturing capability, and training program. Rwanda is positioning itself not just as a customer, but as a regional hub for autonomous aircraft operations and maintenance. The economic model is fascinating. Traditional aviation infrastructure requires massive fixed investments in airports, runways, air traffic control systems. But electric autonomous aircraft need much simpler infrastructure. Landing pads can be built on rooftops. Charging stations are basically large versions of electric car chargers. Air traffic control can be largely automated and managed by computer systems. This means Rwanda can build advanced aviation infrastructure at a fraction of the cost of traditional systems. And because they're building it for autonomous electric aircraft from the beginning, they avoid the compatibility issues that countries with legacy aviation infrastructure will face. 
Imagine waking up in Kigali in 2035. You open an app, request a flying taxi, and within three minutes, an autonomous aircraft lands on your building's helipad. Your two-hour commute becomes 15 minutes. Weekend trips to neighboring countries become as easy as crossing town. Medical emergencies become survivable because help is always minutes away. Rural communities become connected to global markets because distance no longer matters. This isn't science fiction anymore. Yesterday in Kigali, it became reality. But the bigger story isn't about flying taxis. It's about how a small African nation decided to lead the world into the future instead of following. It's about understanding that the 21st century belongs to countries that can execute bold visions, not just dream about them. The demonstration flight of the Ehang A2 Sksnens in Rwanga represents something much bigger than aviation technology. It represents a fundamental shift in how we think about development, technology adoption, and global leadership. For too long, the narrative has been that developing countries must follow the path laid out by developed country. Rwanda is proving that wrong. By leapfrogging traditional infrastructure limitations, by embracing cutting-edge technology, by building regulatory frameworks that encourage innovation instead of stifling it, Rwanda is showing the world a TST, different path. They're proving that small countries can lead in emerging technology markets if they have clear vision and the courage to act on it. Rwanda just proves something that the rest of the world needs to pay attention to. The future doesn't belong to the countries with the biggest economies or the most resources. He belongs to the countries with the clearest vision and the courage to act on it. Yesterday, Africa took flight. And Rwanda is leading the way. If this blew your mind, smash that like button, subscribe for more future-focused content, and drop a comment. Do you think you trust a pilotless flying taxi? Would you want to see this technology in your country? And most importantly, what do you think other countries can learn from Rwanda's approach to emerging technology? I'll see you in the next one.